Hello friends, Dr. Sangeeta with you for another lecture of Dental Patshala. I really appreciate you guys are taking out time to watch the videos. And in the lockdown, you are investing your time in studying. That's a good thing. Leave comments. They are helpful and keeps me going and motivated to put more videos. So today's topic is, it's a story about the Pavlov. It's this classical conditioning theory. So let's get started. <laughs> classical conditioning theory which was given by Ivan Petrovich Pavlov, a Russian psychologist. Now he used to do study on digestive system of animals and accidentally he studied the conditioning reflex on the dog. Conditioning means the process of training a person or an animal to behave in a certain manner. So he gave this classical conditioning theory and this theory is also known as the respondent conditioning, the conditioned reflex, the conditioned response and the Pavlovian conditioning. Well, excuse me today, I have little sore throat. You must have heard of the Pavlov famous experiment with the dog. Now Pavlov put a dog in a cell providing all the basic and necessary uh, requirements and put a bowl uh, to measure the saliva, to measure the quantity of the saliva. All activities were measured through an observational screen and a bell was attached to it. Normally, naturally we salivate while looking at food or when we see the food we salivate. Now there are two things, a stimulus and a reflex. Stimulus is a thing that starts, that evokes a specific response or a specific reaction and response is the reaction or the reflex. Now in this case, food is our stimulus and it initiates the salivation. So salivation is the response to the food. Salivation is the response to the stimulus. Now before conditioning, what happened was initially the unconditioned food stimulus. Now food is unconditioned in this case and because naturally we salivate when we look at the food so it is not conditioned it is something which has happened naturally so the unconditioned food stimulus shows salivation response in the dog now Pavlov attached a bell to it and now there was running of a bell while serving food to the dog so before serving the food there was a bell attached initially there was no response there was no salivation while ringing of the bell now after a few days they noticed Ringing of the bell produces salivation to the same extent as the food was giving, as the unconditioned food stimulus. So they found that the dog was taught to associate bell with the food and then respond to it by salivating, by salivation. Now bell is a conditioned reflex. After conditioning, the bell stimulus, the conditioned bell stimulus responds to, respond to the conditioned response. Now, after ringing the bell for few days, the bell was rung before the food and then food was served. After few days, what happened was Pavlov noticed that after ringing the bell, the uh, dog is salivating to the same extent as he was salivating to the food, the, to the unconditioned stimulus. Now, the principle involved, there are four principles involved with this process with the classical conditioning theory. The acquisition means learning a new response by conditioning. <coughs> Excuse me. And generalization means conditioning at every conditioned stimulus. That means response at every stimulus. Generalization means, uh, let me give you an example. A child in a childhood had a painful dental experience. Had a painful experience. He had an injection at a dental clinic. Now he always associates this clinical experience with the painful. Now whenever he see, whenever he looks at the dental clinic, he recalls the painful dental experience. This is generalization. If generalizing the uh, generalizing the conditioning. When he sees the stimulus, every time the stimulus gives the conditioned response. This is generalization. X means if you ring the bell every time and you don't give food to the dog. Now what happens is this uh, stimulus, this response will be extinct. This response will finish. There will be extinction of response to the conditioned stimulus and dog will no longer salivate to the bell. Discrimination means 
discriminating, differentiating. Now, when a child is exposed with a good dental experience, previously he had a bad dental experience and afterwards he had a good dental experience. Now, he can differentiate into two responses, into two stimulus. Now, he can differentiate this is uh, the stimulus, this is some another stimulus. For example, you say that the dog can discriminate between the bell, which bell is for food and which bell is the fake bell. So, this will be a discrimination. While using a handpiece, the sound of the handpiece works as a condition reflex and responds to the bear and responds to the our handpiece, responds to the sound of our handpiece, the child starts crying, which is the conditioned response to the stimulus, which is the sound of our handpiece. So, good thing about the classical conditioning theory is it is simple to understand unlike the psychosexual theory of Sigmund Freud and the psychosocial theory by Eric Erickson and the Piaget cognitive theory which we have already covered and I will give you a link in the description below if you haven't watched the video and up in the i button. So, that's about classical conditioning theory by Pavlov. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you understood it. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment below. Give it a thumbs up. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe to Dental Patshala. If you haven't done it yet, most of the students are not subscribing it. If you want to watch our videos, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and I'll see you soon.